Good ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Crying is a Strength and the session is a program where we invite innovators and uh, experts who are in the blockchain fintech ecosystem to come talk about uh, what they are doing in the ecosystem and the state of the blockchain and fintech space. So joining us today uh, to discuss an interesting topic is an innovator in the ecosystem. I have with me Ia Dubrovsky, who is the founder and chairman of Sferum Lab. Ia, you are welcome to the Crying is a Thank you. I'm actually going to correct you. Um, right now, uh, we are changing our structure. So currently, I'm the CEO of the Amana product line uh, in the Spherium ecosystem. And I'm the one of the, the original three founders of the, the entire Spherium project, along with my co-founders, Sajjitun and Alex Berstein. Okay, sorry for those. Uh, um, I didn't get those no, 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 no problem. It's, 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 we're, we're young, so... We are adapting and, you know, it uh, as we go along, so uh, it's not a problem at all. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, decentralized automation. We see, uh, like you said, we are young and uh, uh, things are happening in this uh, age uh, with technology. So before we go straight to that topic, just a brief about your background. Sure. Uh, so I started out my life uh, from the age of three. I was a musician. Um, and from the age of three to, three to the age of 27, I was basically a classical musician, uh, Western music. I was a classical violinist, uh, composer, and a little bit of conductor. Um, basically, I competed professionally, played in different orchestras, played as a soloist, went to gigs, did pretty much everything you can, eventually became a music manager, um, and that's how I got into business. And then in my late 20s, I, you know, got married, fell in love, had kids uh, and decided to go into uh, business, the business world, uh, because I decided to settle down, basically. Um, music, musicians life is very difficult, a lot of traveling. Um, and so I went into first, you know, the, the, the basic scenario, you go into corporate, you know, I went into corporate, uh, worked in different countries and including United States. Um, and at the same time, I also, um, was very interested in startups. Um, my wife and I were actually founders of a startup. Um, and, you know, we went through the whole process at the, at the time, you know, going to accelerators, applying to incubators and all of that. And I got hooked. I love startups. I love fresh ideas. And so I continued to work in startups in different genres. Sometimes startups would come to me and ask me to develop them. And so that continued. Uh, for a while. And then eventually around, I would say, uh, maybe 12 months ago, maybe 14 months ago, um, I uh, got contacted by a company from, uh, the, uh, East, from Eastern Europe. Uh, it was based in Moscow and, and, and Minsk, Belarus. And they were a company that worked on blockchain and they were a digital agency that created blockchain. They did marketing, they did, you know, the works. Um, and they needed somebody to represent them in the United States. I'm a Russian, fluent Russian speaker. And so it was kind of a natural fit. They w needed somebody to really help them out, uh, gain market share. And so I started to work with different clients, trying to get them clients, trying to help, uh, help them grow. Um, and in that time, I became their CDO uh, and chief development officer. I introduced different product lines. Um, and, you know, eventually I formed friendships with uh, two investors and business people. Uh, one was Sajjitun from Mauritius and UK. And the other one was Alex Berstein from uh, currently in Munich, but originally from Russia. Um, and basically we formed an agency called BTC DLTD in the UK, uh, working primarily in blockchain and primarily in crypto. Um, and that lasted around four or five months until, you know, I got super bored with it. <laughs> and I and I always wanted to go into startups. So I said, listen, guys, we, let's go into startups. We need our own product. We're never going to we're never going to make money if we continue to, 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 to be an agency. So, um, you know, I wanted and I envisioned to have our own token because I worked with tokens. Um, and at the time, Sash was very deeply involved um, in uh, DeFi uh, because, you know, he's, you know, a hardcore fan of all new things, crypto and 
he, you know, had all the information, was trading and all of that. So, you know, basically what, what happened was we kind of con combined my idea for a currency with his idea of, of DeFi. And uh, that's how Spherium was born. I have to credit Alex Bernstein for coming up with the name of Spherium because that was his contribution. Um, and, you know, ultimately speaking, um, eventually we also, you know, uh, we also hired a person named uh, Mohammed Nakib, who is usually in Riyadh. Uh, I believe now he's in India. Um, and, you know, he's a very deep thinker for blockchain in the Islamic world. And basically, um, at one point, he introduced the idea of creating a wallet application uh, that is DeFi, but that follows Sharia law and Islam Islamic finance. And because I used to be in, in sales and, and biz dev, and, you know, I worked with people in the Middle East, I already had a little bit of a concept of Islamic finance. I knew, for example, that you, you can't have high interest rate, you, you can't uh, profit from loans. Um, and the ideas in Islamic finance really matched my own uh, um, convictions of uh, finance. And so basically, I whole, whole, wholeheartedly supported the idea. And that's how, you know, the Spherium ecosystem developed the Amana product. And Nakib basically leads it. Eventually, he hired, uh, you know, uh, experts in the field, such as Mufti Bilal Omarji from the UK and others. And we just kind of went with it. And so really, as of today, the Spherium ecosystem is composed of the, um, the functional dot finance product, which is in development, um, which is conventional finance, conventional DeFi, and the Amana product line, which is Islamic finance. It's a it's a complete. Uh, there's a question I want ecosystem. to ask you. Uh, there's a question I want to ask you. Um, when it comes to uh, Spherium, I saw on, on your platform, uh, you uh, Spherium. You wrote uh, Spherium aims to bring a real world asset into a digital finance circuit. Uh, through the dynamics of decentralized automation. What does that uh, mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I have, I have to, I have, okay, I, I'm gonna give credit to a lot of people here because I feel that people that, what that all means, and again, I, I give credit to Gokul in India for com, coming up with that. That means that we will plan to create a complete ecosystem for everybody in the world. Um, that includes things like um, tokenizations, whether the tokenizations happen in Western finance, uh, whether they happen in Islamic finance uh, with, uh, you know, Islamic sukuks. Uh, we also plan to introduce synthetic tokens in our conventional platform. Um, you know, basically what, what we're meant to say is we're going to stand on the shoulders of those who came before us and present a complete ecosystem. Um, and that's kind of like, that's what we mean by circular is that, you know, things come full circle. We streamline the platform. You know, we're there, we, we see what has happened, and then we integrate it into what we do and create a complete ecosystem. So that's my, that's my personal interpretation of what Goku <laughs> wrote. Okay, uh, that's very nice. Uh, when we are talking about decentralized automation, what, 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 what's your understanding of that? Well, from your own understanding, what is exactly decentralized automation? So, uh, uh, sorry, there was interruption. So, what you're saying, uh, you, the question was. What exactly uh, is uh, decentralized? Is, is DeFi? No, decentralized automation. Decentralized, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. Decentralized. Automation, automation. Automation? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you know, to me, it's basically a financial system, right? You, But it works in a decentralized way. So, you put in the uh, the assets, and when you have. The different ways to integrate them into a decentralized system that's what I uh, uh, are there some benefits and dangers associated with decentralization you know the way everybody is talking about decentralization are there some what are some of the benefits and uh, disadvantages associated with uh, decentralization i think the main benefits is that you get control over your financial situation um you know, you don't have to deal with banks. You don't have to deal with centuries old systems that m don't necessarily work the way they are supposed to work. Um, you have full autonomy to, to do with your money, whatever you want to do, to manipulate it any way you want to in order to make a profit. 
Um, one of the great things about DeFi is that it's one of those products that, you know, if you have $200 to put into a wallet, a decentralized wallet, and you know what you're doing, there have been stories of a person uh, putting into $100 making $250,000 at the end. Um, it's a product that allows you to, as long as you are educated enough, uh, make potentially a lot of money um, from very little. Um, so that's, you know, so I would say benefit number one, you have full control. Benefit number two, you don't have to have a lot to make a lot. Benefit number three, um, if, if you have a good, a well-designed um, wallet application, it can even be a banking solution and a non-custodial centralized banking solution plus an investment solution. And what you get is whether you live in Switzerland or whether you live in Bangladesh, you, you get exactly the same playing field. You can make exactly the same money. Uh, so I think it's a democratization of um, financial situation for pretty much everyone. You know, you, you, if you have $50 to put into a DeFi platform, you can potentially make, you know, uh, you, you know, a lot more money, like a thousand dollars off of that. So, um, I, I think it's a, de a full democracy of, over, over finances, frankly. Okay. Uh, and you didn't, uh, you didn't make, uh, just touch a bit about the, uh, disadvantages. What are you uh, uh, sorry? Come again, disadvantages? Disad yeah, some of the are there no uh, disadvantages? Okay, well, the disadvantages are obviously that if you messed up, <laughs> there's nobody that you can go to pretty much. I mean, you know, there's no central banker who is going to rescue your funds. You know, you send it to the wrong address, good luck getting the money back. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, it's, it's, you, you literally have to be totally on, totally on point, uh, totally focused in what you're doing. And you have to be very precise and very, and very, and you have to do your own due diligence. You know, you don't have to do due diligence in a lot of countries when you go and put your money in a bank, you know, the bank is, has, has been there for 50 to hundred to 200 years. Um, the, the way that it works already is established, but in the DeFi, you know, Uniswap is what, like a little over a year. I mean, you know, I, I don't remember exactly a year and a half old or something like that. I mean, and that's the, the most established platform out there. So, um, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's it's one of those things. There's there is a trade off for now, but I'm not sure that in three years there will be a trade off anymore. Interesting. Now, before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin is a Strike Interview Session, so I would like to uh, get your point on this. Uh, on what uh, problem have you discovered in the uh, ecosystem and uh, what do you, how are you solving this challenge with uh Sphere Lab? What exactly is Sphere in Lab terms of solving? right? So, there are several major problems that we're solving with Spherium. Um, the most innovative solution that we have, I would say, is the Amana uh product line. There's right now what two billion people in the world who are uh Muslims. They don't have a DeFi platform. They can't use DeFi platforms because what is designed right now goes against their religion. And so basically, you know, everybody is using these platforms and, and they're getting left behind. So the first solution that we have come up with is we're solving their situation. We're giving them a, a level playing field as everybody else and including them in the world DeFi culture uh, revolution and ecosystem. The second solution that we're coming up with is we have a much cleaner um, organizational structure. Very often when you're dealing with DeFi, you're dealing with uh, projects created by, by three developers maybe at most, and they're all anonymous. And, they're, and the product, you know, the, the projects launch their tokens and then, you know, you, you get what happened with, with Uniswap, you know, it's, or, or not Uniswap, uh, excuse me, Uniswap. You know, where a person decides to cash out a bunch of tokens. Um, and uh, hello there. Hello. I'm with you. I can hear you. Okay, good. So you know, like what happened with Sushi Swap, you know, and and so in our structure, we have a board. The board is composed of um, DeFi and CFI um, uh, financial leaders and business people. We are completely transparent. We are totally accountable. Uh, the people in the company are there 
to make as guarantors of the quality of the of the financial product in the market um, to give you a face behind the people who created the project and so you know I would say transparency and accountability is another solution that we're coming up with and then the third solution is the technological the the hyper swap you know I mean we're creating um, a swap that is more powerful offers you more dividends and works uh, with more uh, um, blockchain systems the and so really what we're doing is we're making the technology more powerful and we're, we're stream, streamlining it. Interesting. Uh, that was a powerful one from you, Ilya Dubrovsky. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's our pleasure.